morning you guys it's Karen and I am back I know I forgot to tell you that I was actually going anywhere but um, hubby took a week off work and we went on lots of adventures with Watson just lots of lovely walks um, days out and whatnot and then and we also chose a new kitchen and then I took an extra week off just because I had so many things that I needed to do I needed to do my tax return um, kind of household things like I needed to wash all the carpets all Watson's beds the curtains things like that for his allergies so um, I just decided to take an extra week so I am back and excited I've got a lot of things to tell you about actually particularly sunscreen so today I'm talking about this one this is the Beauty Bay face lotion SPF 50 I've done my notes on this and I have been using it for the past week it is a very <gasps> <laughs> a very liquidy product that I've just sprayed everywhere that's actually happened to me one other time so that's something perhaps to note that you need to be really careful when you depress the pump because it goes everywhere um I did it in the living room and it went all over my uh what do you call it puffy cushion thing um so yeah very liquidy you get 50 mil in here which is not a huge amount you know it's not a large bottle somebody had said because I posted a little community post on YouTube saying you know that I would be coming to review this but to let you know that I was really enjoying it um, and somebody said they wish it come in a bigger bottle I absolutely do as well but a couple of the ones I've been reviewing are in 50 mil bottles um, this is eight pound it is vegan cruelty free I'm looking down at my notes here that I made yesterday vegan cruelty free it's an SPF 50 um it doesn't say about the uva i know a lot of of you guys want to have the pa plus 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 it's got uva plus uvb on the front and it is european made which means that the uva needs to be equal to a third of the spf so there's high uva in it i'm not concerned about um the fact that it doesn't have the pa plus plus on it um, but i really like this i have to say so far i'm really enjoying it it is untinted and i did a poll for you guys asking um do you prefer your sunscreen to be tinted or untinted? And I thought it would come back mostly tinted. I don't know why I thought that, because I prefer untinted. Um, but actually it came back that 70% of you prefer untinted and 30% tinted. Um, some of you were saying that you'd prefer tinted, but you've never found one that's the right color, which makes sense. So this is untinted and I don't think it leaves a white cast. I'll put in the video now of me applying it um, and you can see that it doesn't leave any cast but obviously I'm quite pale. Um, there aren't many reviews around of this but I did watch one video by a guy and he was saying well firstly when he put it on I thought oh, it does make him look a little bit paler um, but it didn't take long to sink in but he was noticing that it was kind of catching around his beard um, but but no white cast as such and I found that it it went on lovely and um, although it looked ever so slightly shiny when you first put it on within a couple of minutes that was gone like literally I came through here to put this on for the video and then by the time I got through and got my foundation out started putting my foundation on it felt like the perfect base for foundation so I had no issues with that okay let's talk ingredients so the number one ingredient in this is octisalate, which I was a little bit disappointed to find because I obviously missed it when I was looking at the ingredients. And as I've mentioned before, I try to avoid the old chemical sunscreens for a lot of reasons. And I'm talking about oxybenzone, octinoxate, avobenzone. Um, I avoid them because there is some concern over what they're doing to the reefs. There is controversy about that and there is there is thinking that it's, it's not this is not the the biggest problem there are other l bigger problems um, and that this causes very little damage those type of sunscreens but um, the other thing is there was there has been in the past animal studies showing that they may disrupt hormones now there's not enough evidence I know that and it hasn't been done in humans it hasn't been proven in humans but I have enough problems with my hormones that I'm happy to avoid anything that could disrupt hormones and so I need to update my own research on it actually and see if there's any more research, if there's any more knowledge out there about it, but that's why I avoid those. Octisalate is on that list, but it's probably the least, considered the least harmful of all of the chemical, the older chemical sunscreens for both the coral reef and hormones. So, so like I said, I'm disappointed, but it's one that I may be able to get on board with. <laughs> if I decided this was the sunscreen for me, then I would just look into that octisalate further and maybe do a video, but it's been hard to do that kind of research with, you know, the migraines and whatnot. So that's the number one ingredient. The rest though are the more modern chemical sunscreen so you've got Uvenal A+, Tinazorb A to B, Uvenal T, Tinazorb M and Tinazorb S um, so that's really good and this formula is very much like 
the carbon theory one that I came on and talked about and said how that was my new holy grail um, and one of the first things I would say is that they're both 50 mil this one's eight pound the carbon theory one I think was 16 pounds so obviously a huge difference in price eight pound 16 pound it's double the price yeah double the price um, but I do like the fact that you can squeeze the other one it doesn't spray everywhere like with this one sometimes if I press this down I need to be very very careful it's one of those that you can't gently press it it's kind of press 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 and then some comes out you know you don't you almost don't have much control over it if that makes any sense um, but it's a lovely sort of liquid the the ingredients in this are actually very similar to the carbon theory one that I, that I did the review on for you guys and that I said was going to be probably my holy grail um, the biggest difference is this one is eight pounds the carbon theory one is 60 16 pound and they're both 50 mil so that one is double the price but it doesn't have octisalate in it um and also i don't like the pump on this as you've seen but i prefer the fact that you can kind of squeeze um some out with the other bottle there's no fragrance in this one it does have a slight sunscreen smell which is coming from the um sunscreen ingredients and it's that same sort of smell that i really like which is kind of like a beachy smell to me it's just that typical sunscreen smell um and i love that but it's it's barely noticeable it's it's one that occasionally i'm like oh does this have a scent let me see if i stick my nose right in it like it's so so faint that it's it's barely noticeable but there's no fragrance in here no added fragrance at all um i have found this to be really good under makeup i found that it's really good as a moisturizer as well i've used it on its own you know quite a few times and my skin hasn't felt dry at all it doesn't sting my eyes when you know i make sure i put it all over my eyes it doesn't sting my eyes at all um i'm trying to think of the skin types this would be good for i think it would be good for most skin types other than perhaps sensitive because um, this has got Tinazorb M in it, which I think is one that some people have a sensitivity to, but also octisalate that I mentioned. That's another thing with the, the older chemical sunscreens, they're more likely to cause irritation. And octisalate is one that some people have had allergies to. Um, I don't know about really oily skin. I mean, I still do have oily breakouts. And if I wear a sunscreen that's too greasy, it will break through my makeup and it will make my makeup feel like it's just sliding all over my face and this doesn't do that at all you know this is me got it on underneath this makeup and I've had it on for the last week and never at any point at the end of the day gone oh my makeup looks terrible or it looks like it's you know when it sort of gathers like it, for me it would gather like in a little patch here on my chin and it hasn't done that at all so it's worked well under makeup and it hasn't caused me any oily breakouts or anything like that but I think it might be worth waiting for some more reviews if you've got really oily skin. Because I looked up, I could not find a single review. All I could find was one other video on YouTube um, by a guy. I think I talked about it because he said it was getting caught in his beard. But um, he was absolutely fine with this. This does have Nano in it. The Tinazorb M is Nano. Um, just going down my list of things I have to remember and tell you. It's an SPF 50, which is really good. A nice high one rather than a 30. So great for the summer. Um, UVB Nano, no fragrance. It's not mineral it's vegan uh skin type reviews tinted it's not tinted reef safe doesn't sting eyes comparatively this is actually the guy that i watched he was saying it's very much like the la roche per se and anthelios i think it's called spf 50 and that's actually something i used to use before i went cruelty free la roche per se aren't cruelty free um but apparently they are using the china workaround which again is controversial in terms of being cruelty free but that's something else i've got on my list to look into but um it so it does feel a lot like that fluid and this also feels a lot like the carbon theory fluid and i wrote one other one down oh the garnier fluid do you remember the garnier um I think it was just called UV fluid, something like that. I've done a whole review on that. I think that had another chemical sunscreen in it as well. Um, I'm trying to think how this would compare to that because I haven't used it since last year. And I saw it in Boots a couple of weeks ago, but looked at the ingredients and it has got chemical sunscreens in it. So I didn't buy it again. Um, but I think it's very, very similar to that. So I think that's all the information there is out there at the moment. Let me know what you think if you've tried this. Um, I think the standout thing about this is that it's eight pounds, you know, because the only, the only kind of drugstore one that I know of that's really good for the face that is a light fluid is that Garnier one. And 
and that has it's not octisalate there's something else in it i just had a look um a quick watch of my video on the garnier fluid just to see out of interest what um the ingredients were and what i said about it and how it applied i watched me applying it it looks like it applies exactly the same the um it's ombre solaire by garnier and it is eight pound but it's only 40 mil you get in that one so actually this one is better value for money um and also i would say to buy this one in terms of ingredients because the garnier one has alcohol as the third ingredient and it also has avabenzone in it so that's one of the sort of higher um older chemical sunscreens um, so i would say this one would be a better choice than the one from boots the well that's where I'm looking at it, the Ombre de Lair one, um, but they feel very, very identical. The other one I also compare it to is the Dermalogica one that I used to love to buy. I don't know if it even exists now, but it's um, it was called Oil Free. It was just an SPF 20, I think. That used to be my kind of daily sunscreen and, and moisturiser, and I loved it. But I imagine that one was just old chemical sunscreens because that was many, many years ago before I even looked at the ingredients you know um so yeah that's everything to tell you about this let us know how you've got on if you've bought this or if it appeals to you or if it doesn't why not um let me tell you what i'm wearing on my face i have got on the hydroluminous foundation by number seven i just started wearing it a couple of days ago again i haven't worn it for a while and i just love this foundation it's so beautiful i feel like it's got just the right amount of hydration without it so it doesn't look matte but it doesn't look luminous and it I don't even know if it looks satin I always powder things down anyway and it's also got just the right amount of coverage you know it gives enough coverage to cover bits you don't want it to but it almost feels like I'm not wearing makeup it doesn't feel at all thick and cakey I just love that foundation mine is in cool ivory then on my eyes is it's the Too Faced natural eyes palette i think that's what it's called or natural matte something like that but it's the older version i've got the newer version and honestly the palette is so heavy <laughs> um and the shadows have got they've put a sort of imprint on them and they're not as pigmented it's it's just it's a weird situation so i hope my old one never runs out um on my cheeks is the blush by beauty pie in plumminess and then i've just got the Steeler liquid lipstick in caramello and then i used this lip gloss in sosu on top it's lovely it's a really like it's almost like a moisturizing cross between a lip balm and a lip gloss i suppose but i don't like sticky lip glosses and this is so far away from sticky it's not sticky at all it feels lovely so that's everything thank you so much for watching and i'll speak to you again soon